Welcome to Disciples of Yeshua Deliverance Ministry. I'm Apostle Benny. And uh, today we're going to continue in our faith teaching. Today's lesson is titled Hold Fast. Amen. Hold Amen. Fast. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a place in the Bible where the, let me see if I put it on here. Um, Luke, Luke chapter 17, verse 5, where the apostles say to Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were to ask the Lord to increase our faith, we should know what he would say to us. Yeah. He didn't stop and say, hey. The way your faith grows is this. He just said words to them. He just kept talking. He acted like he didn't, really didn't hear them because we know that my faith is going to increase as I hear the word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. So he just, he just kept talking. Right. He like, if you listen to me, what? Faith will come, right? Mm -hmm. If you right. listen to the words I'm saying, right. if your faith is being fed right now. Right. So we sometimes ask God, oh, I need more faith. Well, God, like you already know, then, then study more word. <laughs> study more word. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Study more word so that you understand what it is that the Lord is saying in his word. In the logos, you'll get revelation of the logos when you study his word. Now I'm going to I'm going to show y'all something today in this word where the logos is speaking, and you can keep trying. To, I don't know if you need to be trying to get revelation. I think that you should understand that revelation comes to you when you study God's word. It's the same way you're looking for signs and wonders. We don't have to look for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are supposed to follow us. Amen? Amen. He said, you minister the word, and I will come and confirm the word with signs and wonders. Well, it's the same thing with revelation. Revelation comes as you study the word of God. You don't have to go digging for revelation because the devil might give you one. Mm. Mm. I'm serious. There's a lot of people who like to spiritualize everything and don't understand everything's already spiritualized. Everything's already spiritualized. It's either on the good, with the good spirit, or with the evil spirit. So you go and trying to tinker with spirits. A lot of people like to play with spirits. You hear some people tell you, I'm not, I ain't religious, I'm spiritual. I'm like, I hear you. What does that mean? Are you walking with Jesus? Or are you walking with another spirit? Now, there are different spirits. I'm not going to go into all that today. I just want us to hear, they ask their Christ, their God, their leader, to increase their faith. And we already know how to do that. We don't need to be asking God to increase our faith. Now, sometimes what you need to go and find is a promise that God gave about that thing you're believing for. And stand on that and, and, and read that and continue to believe that and a, allow the Holy Spirit to give you revelation of that promise that you're standing on, where, how and where and when it pertains to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, we're starting in Romans, right? Romans chapter 4. Starting at verse 19. Let me, verse 19. All right. Now, we're looking at the New King James. Now, this kind of Bible we have. We haven't truly converted over to the King James yet. We're on our way. We're on our way, but I'm going to keep going back and forth. And the Amplified. 
the classic Amplified. Romans chapter 4, verse 19, New King James. Go ahead. And it reads, And not being weak in faith. And not being weak in faith. Go ahead. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now, we're talking about Father Abraham, right? Yeah. It said, and not being weak in faith. Then he went on to explain what weak in faith is. Read it again. And not being weak in faith, uh -huh. he did not consider his own body. Now, being weak in faith means you consider your circumstance. Come on now. Jesus. Mm. Now, there's nobody in here who don't know their circumstance. Okay? We all know our circumstance. We all, we all know our issues. But when God gives you a word, and then you start talking your circumstance instead of receiving that word, and it starts to drown out the word, you are now you messing with your faith, your own faith. Mm -hmm. Okay? You did not take the word of God. You didn't receive the word of God. You heard the word of God, right? Yeah. But when it came, it didn't do you any good because it wasn't mixed with faith. Amen? Uh -huh. So when God says something to me about my situation and God makes a promise to me about my situation, I need to, don't consider your situation. Right. I already presented it to him. God said, okay, this is the issue you have. Here's the medicine. And then you start talking about, but my issue, I, I, just, I just gave you the medicine for your issue. I don't need to hear about your issue no more. I just gave you the answer to your issue. What are we supposed to meditate on? The answer or the problem? We, at, we meditate on the answer. So we meditate on the word of God, which he already gave me to address my issue. Go ahead and read the rest of his, this boy issue right here. Um, verse 20. Uh-huh. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. Now, no wavering through unbelief. So now you know he heard something, and he had a chance to operate in unbelief. But it says he didn't, re he didn't consider his condition. Let me see verse, verse 19. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. Listen to that now. That sounds like a dead situation to me. Okay? He said, hey, we are, he knew his body was dead already. And he, he, he didn't even think about his age. And then he started talking about his wife, how dead she is. That she ain't working with nothing either. You ain't working with nothing. Y'all old, all old. And she ain't working with nothing. And he had to sit there and listen to God say, you're going to be a father of many. And he's like, I ain't, I ain't got no kids. And this is what I'm going to tell you. That boy caught on to that thing so bad that he had more than one kid. He, just, he started off. He had more than one child because he believed God. He chose, so we see weakened faith. So we need to say, I'm not going to be weak in faith. Huh? I'm not going to be weak in faith. And I want y'all to understand that being weak in faith is a choice. It ain't a condition. I choose to be weak in faith. Listen to, I want y'all to hear this because, see, we got to start considering this a different way. Let's start considering what God said over your cir circumstance. Now, let me tell you, who you think got the loudest voice, God or your circumstance? Circumstance. Everybody want to say God. But which one talking to you all the time? Huh? You, you in it? You got to deal with it every day? You're looking at it? It screams at you? 
Look at me. Look at me. You have to be the one to say, I'm going to give a voice to what God said. You have to be louder than your circumstance. God said what he had to say, and he spoke it to your heart. Now you have to speak it. You have to give voice to his promise. God made us a speaking spirit so that we may speak what the spirit of God wants spoken. That's what we do. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's, let's, choose, let's choose to strengthen our faith. All right, let's, and you went to, you, you, did you finish 20? I did not. Go ahead. So verse 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. So now we hear how to be strong in faith. Being strong in faith is not wavering. So I don't become double-minded. I'm not wavering with what God said. I accept what God said. Wait, uh, uh, verse 20, right? Mm -hmm. I accept what God said. Not only that. I'm going to receive his word. I'm going to worship him in this thing because of his word. Amen? Amen. I'm worshiping him. It says that, he, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. It didn't say gave glory to God. Giving, hearing, giving. So while the word is being heard, he's giving glory to God. Therefore, operating in strong faith. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand? Uh -huh. See, so when you sit there and you start meditating on, your, on the problem and your condition, you want to cry. But if you would meditate on the answer and the, and the, the promise that he made, you may glorify God. Giving glory to God. And we're like, well, how long I got to do that? As long as it takes. As long as it takes. That's the answer. Because for some people, it only take a day. For some people, it take a few seconds. For others, it take a year. Others take 10 years. Some take 20 years. God told me, hey, Benny Walls, this Lord, you delivered from drugs. He told me that in 1990. I ain't believing until 2020, I mean 2000, the year 2000. I heard it from in 1990, it met straight with unbelief. <laughs> unbelief, immediately unbelief. Well, as I continue to walk, I started to believe him more because I was studying his word. So I believed him more. But then I would still see this, the, the, the signs come that I'm, I ain't delivered. But I believed him. See, once I started believing, it was over. I wouldn't quit. I did whatever it took to get off drugs. But all people saw me doing was using drugs. They couldn't see me trying to get off drugs. They didn't understand. Hey, I'm not practicing sin no more. Now I am practicing righteousness. I'm not sinning. I'm not sin conscious anymore. I'm doing what God said. God said I'm the righteousness of God. God told me that Jesus paid for my sin. God told me that it's his goodness that will lead me to repentance. Uh -huh. And so I started Amen. meditating on the goodness of God. I got down on myself because I'm like, I'm nothing. I, I, I'll never get it right. I can't do this. I quit. God was like, thank you. Glad you quit. Glad you took your hands off of it because you're right. You can't do it. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So it took 10 years of slipping and sliding and fighting and lying and cheating and all of this and understanding because God told me I was somebody. See, because when I was using drugs, I already knew I was somebody. Amen. 
him tell me I'm somebody, I'm somebody. But that somebody didn't, w w didn't have nothing going on, wasn't working on nothing. That was just somebody the world told me I was. But I had to, to deposit that somebody into the grave. Huh? I had to be resurrected with Christ. He said, now you're a new creature. You don't sin. But see, people don't want to hear this. They're still stuck on it. I can't study faith without seeing that I've been delivered from sin. The more I study faith, the more it shows me, hey, stop thinking you sin. Because, oh, boy, I said, mm, God said I saw him today. Because he hit me with something. Oh, my God. In Hebrews 10. He hit me with something. I had to stop studying. I stopped studying. I closed my eyes. I quenched my head. And I was like, God, for real? I'm not crazy? Because I don't hear too many people saying we don't sin. People fight against it because of what they see. He showed me. He showed me. Do you understand? Because I've been speaking it. I believe it. And he said, now here's the word to lock it in. So when we get on that, I'm, oh, it's there. I'm like, God, I, I, I'm trying to study faith right now. But like I told y'all, the revelation to come. The revelation to come. I don't know how you can operate in faith and not understand that God said his children don't sin and you still try to make it some kind of way that you sin. We try to make us have to sin because we see us doing these deeds. But the deed is not sin anymore. The same way you are a new creature. The new creature don't have the sin nature. The new creature don't sin. The new creature got the mind of Christ, not the mind of you. You understand? The new creature walks in his newness. Sin has been done away with, paid for covered by the blood, all of that. Why you keep hopping on sin? Yeah. <sighs> I'm on your train today. Here we go. We're going I'm, to Hebrews. I'm gonna give you a little piece. You, you right on it. I can't help it. I tried not to go. See? I'm gonna start this from right here. Verse 26. Okay, because it's all of uh, it's all of 10 to tell you the truth if you read it. It says, For if we sin willfully. That's right down there. Oh, look, God, wait a minute. Oh, what? what, what, what? Now, 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 this is when he was telling us that the veil had been torn and, and now we can go into the Holy of Holies ourselves. Anybody who know about the tabernacle know you better not go in there with no sin on you. <laughs> Anybody who understand the tabernacle know you best not walk up in, in there with sin on you. Come on now. Right. Or son, that, that, that's an issue. Okay? But it says if we sin willfully. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm well. Okay, Hebrews. Have I'm gone. 10. We start in verse 26. Uh -huh. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth. After we have received what? The knowledge, the knowledge of the truth. Because I done told you. Uh -huh. And you won with me. The knowledge of the truth. Any kind of way you want to paint it. If you sin willfully. I'm like, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, God. Wait a minute. Come, come on. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. You stuck like that. Mm, 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 mm. There's no way out. I'm not sending Jesus back to the cross. And I'm not going to send no one else to the cross for you. So if you sin and willfully... Maybe you better check your salvation. Uh, hey, 
Come on. Verse 27. Uh -huh. But a certain fearful, fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation mm -hmm. which will devour the adversary. Because you made yourself an adversary to God. You, you hear this? He says the only thing that you have to look forward to is to be burning you up with that righteous indignation if you sin willfully. Because people still say, forgive me for my sin. So you're, you're saying I sin. You're saying it. You're admitting to it. <laughs> Come on. Verse 28, anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or Keep three going. witnesses. <laughs> right. So if you rejected Moses' law, which is the old, that's the old way, the old nature. And you and, and, and God said, I came and I gave the law to show you what sin was. And if you rejected that with unbelief, I don't even believe that, God. I don't believe them acts of sin just because you said it. No, go ahead. 29. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he thought worthy? Oh, sorry, excuse me. Will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Now. He said, okay, here's one thing. You reject Moses' law. Now you're going to reject Jesus's? You're going to reject what Jesus did at the cross. Jesus told you that sin is gone. Moses told you that's sin. Moses came back with the 10th commandment, showed you what sin was, and he said, you reject that? Okay. What I do to y'all? Those of y'all who rejected him. You see what happened. So now what, what do you think I'm going to do to you? You reject my son. But he's going to take it real deep because all of us in here know a, a something, and I'm going to say it when we get there. I can't say it yet. Go ahead. Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sacrificed a common thing. See, you said that's just a common thing. That blood on the cross, it ain't do nothing. I'm stealing sin and death. I still got to go and get a sacrifice for sin. I got to go and plead at the, at the altar. Say, oh, God, forgive me of my sin. God, God like, What? So you don't take what my son did at the cross. Yeah, we did for the past and for, and for now and for future sin. Ain't no future sin in Christ. Mm. It's past. Uh -huh. And maybe when you came to him, your present sin, you was committing right then. But once you came into Christ, that was the end. Mm -hmm. It's an evermore. Ain't no future sin. Ain't no future sin life in Christ that I'm still trying to do the same thing I did in the old covenant where every time I sin, I got to bring a sacrifice. Every time I sin, I got to come to God. God, please forgive me. God, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I ain't there. I took care of sin once and for all. Keep going. And in Call the verses. Uh, this is still verse 29. Uh-huh. 29. And insulted the spirit of grace. And you did what? Insulted the spirit of grace. Do y'all know what God said happens to people who mm. mess with the Holy Spirit? Mm. Now he said, you, 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 you can kick me around all you want. You can kick my son Jesus around all you want. But now that you come against the Holy Spirit, we got an issue. See, everybody know about that one. We all know about that one, but now he said it. You insult the spirit of grace. I gave you another chance, and you won't take it. You're choosing to be in unbelief. You're choosing not to believe me when I told you my children don't sin, neither can they sin. In 1 John 3. Huh? Because of what you see. You believe that you're still sinning. When I said, okay, what made you, one minute you were saved, the next minute, I mean, one minute you was unsaved, the next minute you were saved. How'd that happen? Because you're still the same person who was standing there, same clothes, same everything, still doing the same stuff. You, what's the difference? What good is salvation if I'm still a sinner? Because they can say, well, I'm not a sinner. I'm practicing righteousness. But, I, you know, I might sin 
And then I got to ask God for if I'm going to tell you, if you might sin, then you practice sin. Mm. Ain't no sin without practicing sin. Because, dude, it ain't like that's your first sin you ever committed. You were sinning, came to God, now you're practicing it again. And you think because you in God, it's okay. Because I can go say, God, forgive me. God say, no, that's not okay. Do y'all remember when I was teaching righteousness, practicing righteousness, and I said, go tell them the flesh? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. You sin, then you go, and you tell them the flesh. Well, God say, let me stack this on top of your brick, because that's where I had you. Because I want you to understand righteousness is practicing the same things you was doing, but now I'm involved. Now, if you accept what Jesus did for you, ain't no more sin. I told you to say when you pray, uh, forgive me of my trespasses. I ain't saying about no sin. Mm -hmm. Because you're standing somewhere you shouldn't be standing right now. But they always look at the word and say, but that trespass and sin, you can, you can uh, 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 enter, what is inter exchange or exchange each one. No, but you really need to study that word because you only see that word used maybe three times in the word of God. I'm trying to tell y'all. Oh, he locked it in today. And I, I'm not blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I ain't said he did. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. But did y'all see that? Mm -hmm. I, want you to read, read, I want you to read verse 29 again, please. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose? <laughs> was, hey, he, he, was, he, God threatening you. Go ahead. What you suppose, do you suppose, will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? That's Jesus. Go ahead. Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sacrificed a common thing. You, count, you just count his blood a common thing. His blood, like his blood ain't worth nothing. It's just a common thing. Go ahead. And insulted the spirit of Hold grace. it. Wait a minute. Stop up. Put on brakes right there. I need for you to tell me. Is that a little S? It's a capital S. So everybody know what the capital S means? Holy Spirit. So you can keep on saying it all you want. Playing with your life. Because God said, what good is the new covenant if you're still doing the same thing from the old covenant? There was no life in the old covenant. There's life in this one. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. There's liberty in here. Do you understand? Right. Mm -hmm. Then we have to operate by faith. Mm -hmm. Another thing. So you have to operate by faith to believe this, yeah. mm -hmm. to receive this. If that word is not mixed with faith, it's going to be mixed with your unbelief. It ain't going to do you no good. Let's go where we're supposed, we supposed to be going, where I, where, I, where I was trying to get to. It's Hebrews chapter 10. We're starting at verse 35. Hebrew 10? So we, okay. Verse 35. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 35. And it reads, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Now, see, that's the New King James. Do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Hey, old King <laughs> in, in the King James Version, Hebrews uh -huh. chapter 10, verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Okay, so it's telling me not to throw away my confidence. I'm going to tell you that, that word confidence, I believe. Is this the one? Yes. This confidence right here is the same word that means substance in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Okay? That word confidence, so it's don't cast away your substance. Don't cast away your confidence, which has what? Now listen to this now. Recompense, which recompense of reward. Who, who going, you know, rec recompense means, like, if somebody do something wrong to you, they, they make them pay, them pay you back, right? Well, who's the one making me pay it back? See, it's not just great reward. It's reward that God said, I'm going to give to you. Do you remember what, 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 what God said? In order to come to me, do I have it on here? I'm sure I do. Yes. 
Hebrews 11, 6 says this, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for, who, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And right here he's telling you, hey, there's great recompense of reward. All right? You put the time in, I got you. God, I'm going to reward you. It ain't just great reward. It's reward from him. I don't know why they took that part out. Okay? Uh, that's, to me, that's important. I don't need reward. I need reward from God. That reward I want. Okay, come on. Where are we? Did I finish that? I finished 1035? All right. The next one, the next scripture for this, and this, the, the thought for this is hold on until the end of your faith. See, because at the end of your faith, you should see what you was believing for. So you got to hold on until you see what you was believing for. That's what we're saying. So it says, the next scripture on this hold on until the end of your faith is Hebrews chapter 3. Go to chapter 3. Yeah, I got focus. Y'all just stay focused now. Don't look at all these little interruptions. Stay focused. Stay focused. This is for you. Hebrews chapter 3. New King James. Verse 14. Hebrews chapter 3. New King James says. And reading that verse 14. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, and it reads, For we have become partakers of Christ. If wait, 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 wait. Y'all hear that? A partaker of that anointing. Huh? Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Listen to it. Go ahead. For we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Now, did y'all hear that? Remember when you first got saved? Anybody here remember when they first got saved? Yeah, remember. Mm -hmm. remember how excited you was? Mm -hmm. And you want everybody to know? Mm -hmm. God say, don't you let that enthusiasm fade. You need to hold that same level all the way to the end. Read it again, please. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> For we, we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our do confidence. Y'all hear the if? Y'all hear the if? Mm -hmm. Read it again, please. Make sure you if. Put some emphasis on that if. Verse 14. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. I'm trying to tell you. God wants us to hold on to our faith. The devil's job is to take your faith from you. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to kill your faith. He wants to destroy your faith. Huh? But God said, Jesus said, but I came that you had life and have it more abundantly. But you can't even get that unless it's in faith. So that's why the devil come after your heart. You know, the devil used to be able to go to my heart and get the word out of there. That's what the Bible say. The Bible never said the devil stole the word out your head. He said when the word was sown and it went to your heart, mm -hmm. he was right there waiting with his hand out mm -hmm. to reach right in there and take it. Well, he can't get to my heart because I got on the breastplate of righteousness. Right. And I have the shield of faith. Amen. And I'm guarding my heart there. Why is God going to tell me I got the shield? I got on the breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. I have the shield of faith, and he's still telling me to guard my heart. Right. See, that's why I tell you, because the garden of your heart will keep them, them, them uh, little dots from coming on the inside. That you saw in your own, you, 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 you throwing the little dots at your own heart. Because mm. your mind, you can't, you don't have a renewed, you operating in, in, in unbelief. Because you won't allow your mind to be renewed. It said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let is right. something that we have to give permission to. I'm right. telling y'all, this faith thing is real. 
Our whole lives have to be by faith. We can't have one part by faith and other part in the natural, or we keep, or we think that's why we continue to think that we sin. And I'm telling you, I know forefathers. I got forefathers who they awesome in faith. They you know what I'm saying? I mean, they 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 big in faith. They've grown up. They've developed in faith. They've manifested all kinds of things, and they still say they sin. That right there is what was what was had me wobble. I'm like, so why wouldn't I believe them? Because God said, who are you going to believe over me? Them? I respect them and love them. I walk with them. But I understand what he's told me. If people can't see it, they can't see it. But that's not going to change my mouth. Because I received it by faith. I believe it by faith. It makes me feel a certain way when I stand up and say I don't sin. You understand? Mm -hmm. It put me in a whole nother realm. Not only I don't I don't I'm walking with him. I got answers. My whole life looked like, oh my God, it's in turmoil. <laughs> but I got answers. Mm -hmm. So the people would ask me today, because y'all don't know, they were like, so have you found a place to move yet? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I have. I'm moving out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm moving. I know exactly where I'm going. I'm walking with my father. Where are we? Well, in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh-oh. All right, all right. We didn't hit the big one. Go ahead. Verse 1. Because, see, I need to look on this paper. This paper helped me so much. Hold on, hold on. Now, the first thing we did was let's choose to strengthen our faith. And we saw what weak faith was, and we saw what strong faith was, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a, 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 a note in here that says, fix your mouth, giving glory to God. So whenever you want to complain and cry about your situation, give glory to God. Fix your mouth. See, it, takes a, it takes a minute for us to get our mouth lined up, you know, with our spirit, man. It takes a minute. Because you'll catch yourself saying stuff, and you'll be like, did I say that? Because now you're hearing the stuff you're saying that's out of faith. So you're going to have to continually work to speak and talk in faith. That means I got to pay attention to everything I say. You better. You better. You better guard your heart with all diligence. See, we asking God and believing him for all this stuff, don't want to give him nothing? God, like, it's going to cost you your very life. But I gave you life more abundantly. Come on. So that's saying, hold on, so it says fix your mouth. Mm -hmm. The next one says hold on until the end of your faith. And I just told you, at the end of your faith, you're going to see what you was believing for. Right. Huh? Right. The next one that we're going to go to now is what? So we need to read these, these little things on here. What's okay. the next one? I must steady my heart. I got to steady my heart. That believer I was telling you about, we, we got to steady it. Because yeah, my heart trembles sometimes. Because I got to believe something that my heart is like, I, I, I can't believe that with you. I'm like, you're going to have to believe it today. And I'm going to have to keep saying it until I believe it. Right. Mm -hmm. Huh? You got to keep saying it. Right. You have to. You got to put your heart in check. You got to put your mouth in check. You got to put your thoughts in in check. You can't be in the world think you're going to get this. He said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And not to let that man think he's going to receive anything from God. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. That's, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Huh. So okay. if you're in double-mindedness, you better start taking this advice right here and get in faith all the way. Amen. And see, in Mark 11, it says this. 
When you stand praying, <laughs> you must believe you receive, and if you do, you'll have it. So what I'm telling you right now, you need to believe you receive it when you stand up and pray about it. God, help me get what, what Apostle Benny was talking about. You better believe at that moment you got it. You can't wait till you feel like you got it. You got to believe you got it now. See, you got to work on that. I tell you, I believe you got to massage that thing. You got to get it going. You got to pump life in there. You need mm -hmm. faith blood running all through there. You need the word of God. The word of God is all up in there because it's healing and health to all your flesh. Yeah. Mm. The word of God. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to operate from here. Amen. Because that, 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 that devil coming, he, he be right here. But you got to speak in faith and split his head. He hates that. He hates it. You believe it. I'm believing that my child is going, to, is going to be good and they're going to do all this. And the devil like, watch this. The child almost jumped out the window. Your heart, what? Well, hey, and you go over there to him. What you going to say? Because now your faith is on trial. What you going to say to them? See, because my natural guy, my natural, I already know what to say. I don't even have to, I ain't got to believe for what I want to say in the natural. I just say it. Mm -hmm. I just say it. And then I might put some actions behind it. Mm. Some corresponding action. Mm. You understand? Yeah. But when faith intervenes, Come on now. Yeah. and I just spoke all this on this child, and right now the devil has made a, a situation for me to pull up all that seed I planted. Now I got to start all over again. Yeah. I done wrecked my whole garden. Oh. Wow. God, did you see what my flesh did? <laughs> you better tell. That wasn't me. That was my flesh. I don't sit. Put that flesh on trial. You ain't going to be putting my faith on trial. I'll put you on trial. That boy right there, that girl right there, she is who God says she is. Amen. She just don't know it yet. That's why I'm here. Because I know it. I'm going to keep speaking it. Till she hear it. Till she believe it. Till they walking in it. Then I'll be like, look at my faith. I got a little faith running around now. Yeah. Hey, hey, I, I can stop on that. Now I'm believing for something else. You understand? That's where we are. Okay, come on. Hebrews chapter 11, starting at uh, verse 1. Hebrews now, chapter 11, starting at verse 1. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Now, faith. Now! I love that verse. That first word is awesome. Because it's talking about right this second. Go ahead. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, remember I told you, what I tell you the word substance was the same as confidence. Confidence. So sometimes you might just have to play with the words a little bit. Now, faith is the confidence of things hoped for. My confidence in it. You understand? Yeah. It's the mm -hmm. substance of things hoped for. Go ahead. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen means the, the conviction. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're going to see in one of these, uh, it's the Amplified, there's another uh, translation, and it, it calls it that. It says, now faith is, it, it says it's the confidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, the conviction. The conviction means, not like somebody got locked up. Mm -hmm. You know, they convicted him of a crime. It's, the conviction is, I say it, I believe it, I stand on it, I'm convicted. You understand? Fully convinced, fully persuaded. Amen. My convictions. I was talking to people about that this, this week also because jobs are telling them they have to take this thing in order to stay there. I'm like, hey, it depends on what your convictions are. That's what you stand on. You stand on your conviction. Okay? Either way. I, I don't say do. I don't say don't. I say, what's your conviction to you? You have to be convicted. You do. Because guess what? You don't want to live with that. Not me. Don't ask me. 
You can ask me what my opinion is, but I'm not telling you what to do. Come on. Conviction. You said conviction. Mm -hmm. Do you believe you? Man. That's what the conviction is. Do you believe you? You ain't got to convince nobody else. Do you believe you? Mm -hmm. Come on. We're going to jump down to verse 6. Uh-huh. But without faith, <laughs> it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, we have to believe that God is and that he is a, ward, a rewarder of those who, and I have I put it in bold, who diligently seek him. See, some people, y'all, you know, you're part-time seeker. Some of them not even part-time. you quarter-time seeker. You know, part-time, that's half, so half of a half is a quarter. You know, like 50 cents, two, two quarters. Some of you just seeking for the quarter of your life, the other 75 cents. Mm. He said diligently seek. Let me tell you something. People who don't seek him at all, sometimes them, them seeking him a quarter is, is diligent to him. See, we can't, everybody's the same. A person like me, and I'm only spending a quarter. God said, boy, you know better. You know better. You can't give me 25 cents and think you're getting by. You need to spend that whole dollar. <sighs> go ahead. We're going to go to Romans. Oh, but we got to understand that he's the rewarder. We talked about that a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Come on, we're almost done. We we're going, to, we're going to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Now, this is what my wife keeps spewing out here. Romans chapter 4. Let me get there into King James. Romans chapter 4, verse what? Starting uh, at verse 21. 21. Now, I'm going to tell you, some of these scriptures on here are foundational faith scriptures. I made sure I put foundational faith scriptures on here. You should pin this paper up on your wall somewhere and, and, and let it hit you and study so you can hear it come out your own mouth. Faith comes by hearing. hearing. Romans chapter 4, verse 21. And it reads, And being fully convinced that what he has promised, he was also able to perform. Okay. What's the King James say? King James reads, And being... Fully persuaded. Fully what? Persuaded. See, which convinced is good, but persuaded. If I'm persuaded, that means I'm not going back on that. I've, I'm not, not, I'm not half-heartedly persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm fully persuaded that what? That what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Now, do you think that what God say, God can do it? Mm-hmm. See, I'm going to tell you what, we need, to, we need to start understanding God's will for us. Then you, a lot of your questions will go away. God's will for you is that you be prosperous. Mm -hmm. God's will for you is that you be healthy. God's will for you is that you're the head all the time and never the tail. Mm -hmm. God, this is God's will for us is that we have life and have life more abundantly. Amen. You don't have to ask God, God, is it your will that I be healed? Yes. That's the answer. I'll tell you right now. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. God, is your will that, 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 that my child is, is be a good child? Yes. Mm -hmm. God, is, is, it, is, it, is it your will that, that I live paycheck to paycheck? No. I want you to have more than enough. Mm -hmm. God's will. God, is it, your, is it your will that my bank account overflowing? Yes. We don't know what God's will is for us. And stop, and stop saying, well, if it be your will, Lord. I'm trying to tell you. When I'm talking to y'all, I'm talking to me. Mm -hmm. I told y'all we started this faith thing. What I tell y'all? I'm teaching y'all as I learn. Didn't I tell you that? Mm -hmm. I, I ain't say, hey, I got it. I'm gonna, let me tell you what persuaded is. Persuaded is to carry out fully. 
completely, complete assurance, entirely accomplished. <laughs> okay, that's persuaded. Where we gotta go, uh, Miss? Uh, We're going to Hebrews uh, chapter three. And 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 and. And James. Okay, and the thought was. Let this mind be in you. Now this is our new mindset, y'all. We gotta hurry up. So we gotta get out of here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, go ahead, go. Uh, new but point. Christ, mm -hmm. as a son over his own house, whose house we are, um, excuse me, are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope firm until the end. God, our new mindset has okay. to be to hold fast the confidence. We got to go all the way back to when we first got saved. Grab that, that, that enthusiasm and let's go. All right, so we should be excited about Christ and the things of Christ. We got to get up in there. All right? He says rejoicing of the hope, okay? That's firm until the end. We got to hold on to the end, all right? It said our mindset. That's our mindset. Go ahead. James chapter 1 verse 5. James chapter 1. Go ahead. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth upbraid not. not. Now, why would it say upbraideth not? Because God wants you to know there's no stupid answer. Because mm -hmm. some of us say reproach not. Because God wants you to know that's why he, that's the only reason it's in here. So that you know, I don't care what you ask me, ask me. And I'm going to give you the wisdom. Mm -hmm. Don't think, oh, I can't ask God. Yes, you can. God said, I'm open to all, any and all questions. Whatever you need wisdom for, I will give it to you. Mm -hmm. But... But, keep going. And James 1, chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that mm -hmm. give it to all men liberally, mm -hmm. and upbraid it not, mm -hmm. and it shall be given him. You got to believe that. Paul. Go ahead. What's next? Oh, you don't have the next, no, do you? I don't. Let me tell you what it said. It said, but let him ask in faith. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You have to ask in faith. Nothing wavering. So God, like, don't come in here and ask me for wisdom and then believe I didn't give it to you. Right, okay. He said, you need to ask in faith. What's that mean? It means, Mark 11, mm -hmm. <laughs> that when you ask, right. you must believe that you receive it. Mm -hmm. When you stand praying. Right. Amen? Amen. See, God wants us acting as if we the millionaire before you become the millionaire. He wants you to act as if we are what we are before we get there. Every time I got elevated in, in the ministry, I was already there before they gave the title. Mm -hmm. Now, some people chase the title. Now, I used to chase the title. And I caught it. And I had to give it back. God made me get a title back because I was Reverend Benny Walls. I put it on my Bible. I said, since you said Reverend Benny Walls, that's who I am because I wanted respect. I wanted people looking at me like that, and God made me give it back. He took my ordination back and everything because you got to be humbled, boy. Mm. I got something for you, and you're trying to make it for yourself. A lot of people go out there trying to manufacture themselves to be something that they're not. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and it's kind of when you're sitting in the audience like this, you want to be up there. You want to be. I, I can do that. I can be the apostle. Mm. You don't know what the apostle go through. You want to be the apostle? Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you about an apostle named Judas Iscariot. Oh, there's apostles. Then there's God's apostles. And if you're God's apostle, you're going to go through some stuff. Hmm. And if you're God's apostle, I can guarantee you from every apostle that walked with God, they tried to run. <laughs> they were like, yeah, I don't know about that one. But anyway, we thank God for the word that went forth today. We got to get out of here, y'all. We thank God for the word that went forth today. This is Apostle Benny at Disciples of Yeshua Deliverance Ministry. 
I'm glad that you came and you spent your Saturday with us. I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving and you had your feast, and I hope you just had another one. If you don't know Jesus, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says this, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you're ready to receive him, I'm going to pray real quick. You receive this. And if you agree, you repeat after me. Father, I'm a sinner. I accept what Jesus did for me at the cross. This wasn't common. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that you, God, raised him from the dead. That means he lives today yes. so that I would be saved. Yes. Thank you for saving me. Now teach me your word so I can operate in faith. I have a confidence, God, and I heard I need to keep it. Yes. Teach me how to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall see you all next week. Right here, somewhere between 11 and 1. Peace. Praise him. Hallelujah.